Uh, hi, everybody. Welcome to this session. Um, sorry for the lights, and I'm also sorry that it's quite warm in here, so apologies about that. I'm Alan Mandel from SUNY Empire State University. We're really happy to be here in the second in our uh, concurrent sessions. And this session is called Answering the Call of the 21st Century Learning, the Practice of Holistic Validation and Learning. And our guests are Ruud Duvaket, uh, Irma Kolkman, and Madeline Farla from the Netherlands. And this will be an interactive session. So we look forward to conversation and we welcome our guests. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> welcome. Nice to see a great turnout. Um, we um, work at uh, NCUI, uh, University of Applied Sciences in the Netherlands, and NCUI is a part of SALTA Group. Uh, SALTA Group is a private education and training uh, institution uh, with several universities of applied sciences throughout the Netherlands, and we offer bachelor, master programs, uh, level five, six, seven. Um, before we begin, short introduction uh, of our team. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, next to me, we have Ruud Duvgat. You already heard him speak last night. Uh, he's our profession of validation and workplace learning. And this is my colleague, Irma Kolkman. She's an innovation and development manager, just like me. Um, I'm Madeleine Farla. Um, since 2020, we have been working on making education in bachelor professional uh, more flexible. In two broad projects, we are, use uh, holistic validation. In a nutshell, it's an, uh, an essential professional dialogue from the perspective of the student's learning experience for the sake of a determining a tailored learned part. As a starter, uh, we would like to know your opinion on the following proposition. Um, building further on informal learning in private and public life is a matter of self-reflection and analysis. If you agree, uh, please stand up. If you don't agree, please stay seated. Hope you will join us. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a tricky question. Yes, yeah, it's a tricky question, and uh, I'm first going to somebody who sit down, and that means that you disagree. I yes, I I found this a, a, a tricky question because I thought, I in my head I put in the word only into that, and I was thinking, is it only a matter of self reflection and analysis, or does it need somebody else or or others? So that's why I'm sitting down. I think it needs others. It needs others. Thank you. Thank you. And next to you, I see somebody standing up. So you, you agree. Tell me more. Yeah, I agree because I think uh, when you can uh, reflect yourself about, upon your uh, skills, about uh, your formal learning process, then uh, you are able to uh, guide yourself in a other direction. So I think that is really important in this. And your self-esteem will grow. Yeah. Thank you very much for this participation. OK, thank you. You may uh, be seated again. <laughs> um, next, we are going to uh, tell you something about our research. Uh, but before we do that, uh, it's important for you to know uh, the profile of our students. Uh, Madeline, can you please uh, tell us more about our students? Yes. The CELTA Group, NCOE, is the main goal to educate working people aged 27 plus. Our students are characterized by long working experience, busy private lives with work and family. They follow a course to make the next step in their career or are making a career switch. This is a brief introduction of our students, but Ruth, can you tell us more about the holistic validation? I can, yes. Um, this is the holistic validation process that we use. Holistic meaning that we look at the totality 
of the student, of the candidate, starting with the intake. So we do a rich, personalized intake on the basis of information provided by the student. Uh, not a, a portfolio yet, but uh, let's say a, a curriculum vitae, but then with the narrative included. So CV information, including information on which are the professional tasks that you perform in your function. And this is the basis for starting with the intake uh, part in which people get an advice, so a formative advice of the potent potentiality of specific professional tasks to be compared in an assessment for equality with learning outcomes of their bachelor or master program. Uh, you see on the table uh, a short flyer. There you can see the process also in what we call the SALTA cascade model for assessment. And on the back side you see some of the quality indicators that we're going to explain later on. But uh, take it with you because this is uh, vital information if you want to understand this holistic validation process. So in the second step after the intake, so the student gets an advice on which are the learning outcomes in their higher education program they want to go for in an assessment because they have professional tasks that might be comparable, equal to the content of our learning outcomes. So that's really holistic, that's bottom-up, self-steered, etc. So the self-valuing is then the next step in which, in, in which the student builds up a portfolio focused on the advice on which learning outcomes I can reflect on. You all know the concept of learning outcomes probably. Uh, a learning outcome is the statement of part of the program that shows you what you at the end of the course should master in terms of knowledge, skills and attitude and the integration of the three. So the student gets a format in which they can reflect on our learning outcomes from their own professional or other life experiences and they, they reflect on the learning outcome and they provide proof of that professional task. Could be a professional product like a, a policy paper or an employer statement or an, an assessment statement by a colleague. Uh, could also be uh, proof of volunteering work in which they also provided, can provide uh, professional products, for instance. Um, in the third step, the assessment takes place, so then that's the cascade model. Uh, the portfolio assessment is the first step in the assessment process in which the student is, uh, well, let's say validated by the assessor on the basis of the filed portfolio. So that's actually the part of the assessment in which the, the, in which the candidate is assessed on the basis of the portfolio. In that step, the assessor determines which products, which proof, which reflection is okay with us. Okay in the sense that I can bring this to our examination board and so that we can trust the equality of the personal experiences compared to our learning outcomes content. Um, the second step in the uh, in the assessment then is the interview. We call it a criterion-based interview that's based on asking questions about the gaps in the documentation of the student. So it's, it's uh, let's say we call that an interview with the green pencil. That's also holistic. You know, holistic assessment is based on the notion that we seek truth on the basis of trust in the candidate's portfolio. We are not into, we're not looking for control, controlling our standard. We are looking for building up our trust in the candidate. And it's not the other way around. So that's the green pencil. It's asking relevant questions, criterion based, on the, on the value of someone's statements, reflection in the portfolio.
Yes. Um, important with that is if an assessor uh, has already seen something in a portfolio, um, he doesn't need to be discussed anymore, but of course, um, very important these days, uh, authenticity, uh, that's still an important question. Isn't yeah. it, Ruth? Yeah. Um, I think in the interview, the most relevant question is looking for the authenticity, especially in this, uh, well, this time with a lot of AE. Uh, well, you need to be sure to trust the documentation that it's made by the student and also, well, you know, in, in the work or the thinking or the learning of the student, him or herself, and not generated by chat, G GPT or whatever. You can make videos with AE. So you look for authenticity in the interview. So actually, the interview is the best assessment form to find out if it's authentic and AI proof. Okay, okay, that's clear. But how does a student know that he has demonstrated the learning outcome? Um, the student um, had the chance to reflect on the, let's say, the indicators of the learning outcome. So, for instance, a student can go for uh, uh, VPL for three learning outcomes in the program. And a learning outcome in NCOE University might build up to 30 credits. So it might be a, a full study year or even two study years that the student can win in this VPL uh, assessment. Um, so the indicators for the learning outcomes, which are also described, are reflected upon. And in the interview, the assessor finds out the truth about this, so the truth seeking. And in the report, through the report of the assessor, the the, let's say the found value of the personal documentation is described and is, uh, uh, well, described in, a, in an assessment report that is then sent to the, to the examination board. So the accreditation lies in being able to set up a controlled report. And, and how does the assessor do that? What, what, what criteria are there in the report? Yeah, that's, that's on the back of the cascade model. Um, well, one of the forms for, well, to have some, to, to be able to build up trust, you need to have criteria to ask questions. So we used in, the, in, in Dutch, it's wraak, with a Q, wraak, wraak. Uh, the Dutch are very good at uh, having uh, two A's in a row or t two U's in a row. We can pronounce that. Uh, for English-speaking people, it's a problem, but for us not. <laughs> but so the FRAG criteria, as you can see, are the, the five criteria that the assessor has in which the questions can be uh, asked, can be put. So is the learning experience that is demonstrated in the portfolio, is it also proof of being able to master it also in other situations, professional tasks? That's imp important. The relevance and the authenticity is already explained. Is it actual? Because, you know, if, an, if, a, if, a, if a proof in the portfolio is 10 years old, that's maybe a bit too old to find and pr demonstrate equality of the personal experience with the outcome of the bachelor program. Yes, that's a VRAC criteria, but we also have level criteria. Can you tell us more yeah. about that? Yeah, we also have, um, for every bachelor program, we have uh, three levels described in terms of knowledge, skills, attitude, and integration. And it builds up from a starting level in which the professional tasks that are demonstrated in the portfolio are simple and probably guided tasks. So someone is working under the leadership of a team leader or a manager. And it builds up from... Uh, year two and three in the bachelor program in which the student can do semi-complex and semi-autonomous tasks and in the fourth year so the final bachelor year the levels are focused on acting autonomously in your professional in your profession in complex situation with integration of the relevant knowledge relevant skills and relevant attitudinal aspects 
Okay, and the results are processed in the student study overview. But Emma, what does it mean for the students? Uh, at the end of the interview, they already uh, know um, what the assessor uh, thinks about it. Um, and we have found that um, for a lot of uh, our students, uh, it meant a reduction in uh, study time or study load reduction. Uh, because the student uh, only has to learn uh, what he does not yet master. Um, so they can uh, go quicker through uh, a bachelor program. Um, we have conducted research on the outcomes of the holistic validation uh, and the experience of students, study coaches and uh, assessors. Um, Ruth, what are uh, the outcomes of the research? Well, we did, a, we, did a, we did a cohort analysis of 140 students. And what we found out is that um, if you have that quantity of uh, documentation that you are researching, then you can build up proof of that we from the university uh, really can accept that outside of our academia, learning might be equal to what we teach. You know, that's a big obstacle in validation, that um, acceptance of informal learning experiences and making them equal to formal learning experiences in bachelor or master programs or also in vet education. Uh, that's something that we demonstrated that we might really have trust in the equality of informal learning in professional tasks because assessment demonstrates this. Uh, another one is that uh, what this really is showing also that we are able to raise the awareness of the students that they can uh, raise their voice because we provide a format in which they can reflect on our learning outcomes from their own learning experiences. So they can use their own words to express their, let's say, empowerment that they think and believe that their learning experiences in a certain way might be equal to our learning outcomes. So again, a holistic principle. In the assessment, we see that uh, interviewing students with the green pencil, so that's not asking for, uh, well, can you, well, it's always a developmental question that you're asking. That's the green pencil. So you're asking about a professional task that's demonstrated in the portfolio, and you can ask questions about, and how would you then act in a different professional task, having to use the same uh, competences? Yes, I hear what you're saying, but the examination committee, what do they think about it? Yeah, well, in the Netherlands, the examination committee is, let's say, the gatekeeper of the quality of bachelor and master programs and also in vet education. So they are very powerful and they are very conservative because if they sign a diploma that proves to be not really demonstrated value, they have a problem because then the inspection comes and they say, well, we take away your accreditation because you give diplomas away. That's a big anxiety in examination board country. <laughs> um, but the funny thing is that we train our assessors ourselves. And what we did is we included the examination board to take part also in the assessor training. So they know how deep the assessment can go. So they build up trust in the quality of the assessment because they know what the assessors are able to do in the process of assessing, in the portfolio assessment and in the interview and in the reporting. So they have trust in the assessors, which actually is the main quality indicator. And then they take a few of the reports and they are going to examine them. And for that, they use the Zakote criteria. They are also on the back. And you can see that these are the criteria in which they can find back in the report 
uh, all, all, all items like, is it truly AI proof? Is the knowledge that is uh, reported in the, in the assessment, is that also truly available and in the person? Is it on the level? So we had, they check the level indicators, etc. So they use the Sakota criteria uh, to examine, you know, one out of 10 of the reports. Uh, very interesting, Ruud. Uh, what are the first conclusions? Well, I think that, um, well, I, well, I will say it. I think that we struck gold with this uh, approach in which, we, uh, in which we link personalized learning experiences, offer a translation tool to translate and transfer personal learning experiences to the learning outcomes that we teach. And we overcame the barrier of don't, not daring to accept that informal learning, so work-based learning, volunteering, might be equal to our learning outcomes. Okay, uh, and what if we also have to implement this in my organization with uh, critical points and uh, are important then, Ruth? Yeah, yeah. Well, you see, well, we fall back on the wisdom of UNESCO. I think this is something you can find easily on the internet. This is really a good masterpiece of what holistic learning is about. And it says it all. It's about, you know, it's also a kind of cascade model approach. Outreach in which you raise the awareness of the learner that they have ownership of their own learning experiences and that they can, be empower, that they can empower themselves on this self-valuation. Self-valuation leads to a portfolio and a claim for fame in our domain of learning outcomes. And that's how it works. And the equal equality of wherever you learn something is, is at the core of working with learning outcomes. So for us, we, we learned to accept with all these candidates that uh, there is equality of informal, non-formal and formal learning. So, but you can read back these, uh, well, indicators for holistic learning. Okay, this is all conditional. What else should I take in account, Irma? Um, the people involved in this entire process must be included. That's very uh, important. Uh, the study coaches and the assessors um, also follow a special training uh, in which they can learn to assess uh, for summatively, summatively and also for, uh, formatively um, so they can offer tailored um, education in bachelor programs. Uh, and in addition, and that was quite uh, a big challenge, uh, is that the back office of our organization um, had to be able to facilitate this process. And uh, in our case, it didn't fit in standard procedures, uh, regular working methods. So it required a lot of uh, specific attention to get that right. Okay, we have a clear view of the entire holistic validation process and the aspects required. I am curious about the experience of all those involved. Irma, can you tell me more about it? Uh, yes, you can see some quotes over here. And I think because of the time, maybe you should read it yourself so we can go to our last slide. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, because that's a very interesting one uh, in which we like to participate you in. Um, is it possible for you to get a, a paper and um, tell us how much trust do you have in such a holistic validation process as we informed you about in our presentation? Can you please put up a number for us on the paper so we can see how you think after our presentation about validation of learning. Have you have full trust and you give a five? If you're neutral, three. And if you have no trust, a one. Oh, it's difficult to see you with the light, I come down. 
Yeah, maybe you can go down to uh, look at some of the results. Oh, yes. Uh, I can't see it from here, so I hope you can... Um, I, I see here a, a two score, a little trust. A little trust. Um, well, it relates to a question I have. What if a person knows something that the academy doesn't know? Well, the academy, it, it, it is a prof the assessor is a professional, so I'm aware that he knows everything about it. It's not a teacher of us. It's a professional who knows how the business runs, so I don't think this... The professional will always match the knowledge, even in emergent sectors? Yes. Ah, okay. Yep. Yes, we, we have... The assessor is also a specialist in, in the corner of his uh, profession. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see I, you I, I, I have a four here, so oh. lots of trust. Yo. And, and why? Um, I work in Denmark where I sit as an uh, assessor. I do VPL work uh, as a practitioner. And we do a lot of things to try and qualify that work. Uh, so I have a lot of trust in, of course, myself, my, uh, <laughs> my own qualifications, but especially also my colleagues. Um, because we do actually... Um, what do you say? We we talk and we uh, what do you say? We we inspire each other. We try and always qualify the work and speak. What is this? What is that? What can that be? Okay, so it, uh, it's mainly built tr trust because the quality of assessors is high. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I I have a, a last one. We have a five. That's the oh, last one. Nice. I, I really want to hear about the five. Can you tell me more? It's probably a little bit easier for me to say five because this is what we do. I work in further education and training and it's a different space, I suppose, to the higher education space. We have a lot more autonomy. We certify uh, awards and major awards, 100% experiential learning, and we call it a holistic process. So from the beginning, it's, 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 about, it's not looking at individual granular detail. Um, it's about an overall sense of a grade for an award and a matching of standards that, um, that the learner can, like what you were saying there and what other people have said throughout the day through multiple means, videos, photographs. Uh, some people like to write, other people don't. Recordings, presentations, and so on. And then it's a, it's a very holistic grading process then around that by a subject matter expert. And again, it has to go through our results approval process after that as well. So yeah, holistic assessment all the way, five for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, we only have three more minutes left. So um, I see maybe there, Ruth, you can go there for one last question or remark. So just a point of clarification on the assessors. Your system is different than our system in the U.S. In the U.S., the faculty member would be that assessor because the faculty member would be the instructor of learning. But from what I'm hearing in your presentation, your assessors are part of the, uh, the government. No? No, no. They are professionals. They are working. What do you mean by professional? Uh, a professional working in the space where the student is learning. Okay. So, for example, I'm a social worker. Then uh, I will be uh, interviewing students who apply for validation in social work. Okay, but in academia for us in the U.S., we would look to that professor to assess the learning outcomes because the working professional may not understand the, the learning outcomes of the class. That's why I'm a neutral. I would be more interested to hear how you're doing it. Now, if that professional is a graduate in yes. that area, then that can be an added benefit. He's a senior and he's often also in a position of being a teacher or, uh, okay. you know, sure. uh, guiding students at work. So he has more roles than only be an assessor. But you have to know a lot about our organization before you can do an assessment. Yeah. We are not good at it in the US on this work, workforce and academia. We're trying to get better. <laughs> I, I, think, I think that, you know, that's still in the Netherlands also the big problem that, you know, the acceptance right. of equality and uh, demonstrating or building up trust in the quality of the assessors. That does the trick. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I see more questions. We are glad to answer them after this session, but I think we have to uh, close it. Uh, the time is up. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention and your presence, and have a nice day.